What is up guys, Joe here with redmondpie.com. So Apple announced iOS 9 at its yearly WWDC keynote. Today we'll be going over its features and what you should expect when you get your hands on with Apple's new iOS 9 update. Now iOS 9 is currently available to download for those who are enrolled in Apple's developers program. But if you want to try it out before its official launch in the fall, there's actually a public beta coming in July. Now as far as compatibility wise, if you are able to run iOS 8, you actually will be able to run iOS 9. This means if you have an iPhone 4S, 5, 5C, 5S, 6, 6 Plus, iPad 2, 3, or 4, the iPad Air, the iPad Air 2, the iPad Mini, iPad Mini 2, iPad Mini 3, and lastly, the iPod Touch 5th generation, it will be all supported, so you'll be able to run iOS 9. Now, while iOS 9 isn't a dramatic update, we did get some wanted features that we've been asking for in past iOS updates. Now, first, we're going to begin with Notes app. Now, the Notes app got a little improvement. Now, you're able to make lists. So, if you need to make a checklist, you can do that. You can even format your text, doodle on a blank canvas so you can draw in notes, and even insert images straight from your camera in the application. Now next we have Siri. Now Siri got a new little UI similar to what we have seen on the Apple Watch. So now when you activate Siri, you'll notice the newly UI on there and also it has new functionalities. So you can say things like show me photos from this weekend and then it'll direct you to your photos application and go to the weekend or you can even specify a certain month and year and then it'll launch the photos app and go over to that certain month and year. Now another cool thing with Siri is the fact that it can remind you even from your text messages. So what I mean by that is when you receive a text message, say for example, a meeting or some lunch date or something, for an upcoming date, you can simply say, hey Siri, remind me of this. And then Siri will set a reminder of that certain text message. So that way when you go into your reminders, it'll actually show you that certain text message so that way you can go back to it and of course be reminded by it. Next we have Siri Spotlight Search. So you can still activate Spotlight like you normally would by swiping down on your home screen or you can simply swipe to the right on your home screen and then activate a lot of suggestions from people to contact to apps to launch nearby places, news, and more. So you get all these suggestions, you'll be able to select show more, so that way you can show more people to contact, more apps to launch, more nearby places. And again, depending uh, your calendar events or anything of that sort, Spotlight will give you suggestions. Uh, so if you have a meeting with a certain person the next day, uh, it'll suggest to contact that person. So Siri is really starting to learn more about you uh, depending what you input on your device. Now Apple has renamed the Passbook app to Wallet. Wallet is going to be of course the same thing as Passbook, it's going to be a combination of Apple Pay and Passbook. It's just going to have a new icon and a new name. Now speaking about Apple Pay, you will be able to activate it on your lock screen depending on your security settings. You can simply double click the home button while your phone is locked to bring up the Apple Pay interface. Now if you want to go ahead and change this and disable that, all you got to do is go into your settings, your Touch ID and passcode settings, and then scroll down to where it says allow access when locked. Now you can disable and enable different settings on here like your today view on your notification center or your notifications view, Siri, reply with message, and again, wallet, you can disable that if you wanted to. Now I'd say if you hand your device to friends and family often, and you don't want them to access that type of information, go ahead and disable some of those settings just so you can be secured. And speaking of security, you can actually have a little bit more security. If you usually use the four digit passcode, you can now have a six digit passcode. So that's also a new little feature on iOS 9. Now, another thing I wanna talk about is the app switcher. So there's actually a new app switcher. It's very different from the older one. The home screen is now on the right side instead of the left. So by double clicking the home button, it puts your current apps on a different location than the previous switcher, kind of making it more difficult. So you have to swipe to the right instead of swiping to the left. But other than the looks, it still acts the same. You will simply be able to swipe up to close out an app. Now with iOS 9 and its new features, I wish they enabled a feature where you can kill all apps with one simple swipe. Now going back into settings, you will notice that there is actually a search setting. So you can quickly search 
for a different setting in your settings application. Now I'm gonna simply search battery and battery is actually a new setting which gives you this new mode called low power mode. Now with low power mode, what it does, it reduces the performance of your network activity to extend your battery life. Now when this is on, mail fetch, background app fresh, motion effects, and animated wallpapers are disabled. Also, you will notice that your battery turns yellow instead of green or red. Now, Apple claims that this will give you at least an extra hour on your iPhone 6, and as far as other devices, it could give you up to three hours of extended battery life. Now, you will be able to see a little bit more information of your battery use, from each application as well if you go down to your battery usage. Now the next thing is your silent switch or the side switch. You now have the option to change it from either lock your rotation when you go ahead and enable that side switch on your device or silent your device. Now there's another feature that will allow you to go back to the previous applications by simply tapping on the back to whatever application on the top left. When tapping on a notification that takes you to a new app, you'll now have a button on the top left of the status bar that lets you go back to whatever you were at earlier. Now another welcome feature is gonna be the easy text selection. So now when you are typing and instead of having a tap really closely to a certain word that you want to edit, now by placing two fingers on your keyboard, you'll be able to move that around and it'll actually turn basically into a trackpad. So you'll be able to move a cursor around so you can edit. So this will highlight your text. Now if you simply put two fingers and swipe to the left or right, it'll just scroll around your text. But if you place your two fingers and you go up or down or anywhere around, it'll act as a trackpad and highlight different text. So you can go ahead and copy that and paste it somewhere else. So it's a lot easier to quickly edit text. This is gonna be a very useful feature on the iPad. Now going over to the iPad, the keyboard actually got a little bit of improvement, giving you a shortcut bar. So that way you have your tools up top now instead of on the sides of the keyboard, which got very annoying on the iPad. Now they're gonna be placed on the top along with your suggestions of words. Now let's go ahead and talk about the iPad side and its iOS 9 features because it does have some exclusive features to iOS 9 and that's gonna be multitasking. Now the first thing is called slide over. So now you'll be able to get a second application without leaving the one you are in. So you can quickly browse the web, respond to a text message or jot something down in a note and then slide that app away to get back into the one you're currently using. So by simply swiping from the right of the screen over to the left, you'll be able to activate slide over. And if you wanna go ahead and change the application, all you gotta do is simply swipe down from the top and then you'll get your selections of different applications. Now this is gonna be available with third party applications like Twitter and more. Now the next thing is picture in picture. So while you're FaceTiming or watching a video, Simply press the home button and your video screen scales down to a corner of your display. Now you'll be able to tap and open a second application and your video continues to play, even while you are using the other application. So you'll be able to keep watching your favorite movie, TV show. Now you'll be able to move this around by simply pressing and swiping it to any four of the corners. You can also resize it by using two fingers and you can also play or pause or just simply exit out the window and then just have the full screen on the other application. Now the last thing is called split view, but that's actually exclusive to the iPad Air 2. So if you don't have an iPad Air 2, you won't be able to use this feature. Simply you'll be able to have two apps open at the same exact time and truly multitask finally on the iPad, but again, it's only available on the iPad Air 2. Now another major thing is the fact that iOS 9 is now a smaller update. It's not gonna take over four and a half gigabytes of storage on your device to update. It now has been downsized to 1.3 gigs. So that way when iOS 9 is available, you don't have to have that much storage to update. But overall, that's gonna be our coverage on iOS 9 and some of its major updates that we think you should know about. Now in the comment section below, let us know what your favorite iOS 9 feature is. And if we missed any, be sure to leave that in the comments below as well. Now, if you want future coverage, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll be notified when we come out with all of our latest videos. Other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching and we'll catch you all on the next one.